Hello everyone, welcome to my podcast. Unfortunately, I am meant to have a speaker today with me. Due to last minute changes, he couldn't come, so I'm doing this podcast on my own. Because of that, I decided to make this more into a video podcast, just to validate what I'm saying and to make it a little bit more interesting by adding graphs, data, tables. I'm here to talk about stemiobella parasitism in the UK and how it is affecting butterfly populations. If it is affecting butterfly populations, and whether it should be seen as a bad or a good thing. Stemiobella is a non-native parasitoid, which in the UK mainly affects Lymphalidae butterflies. This encompasses two main species which we'll be focusing on throughout this blog. Aglaeus urtisae, the small tortoise shell, which is one of the UK's most abundant species, and Aglaeus eo, the peacock butterfly. The microtype eggs of Stermia bella are unwittingly ingested by the host caterpillar and it will go through the gastrointestinal tract until it reaches a certain point where it will bore out into the skin of the caterpillar and stay there to feed on all the soup and the juices that the caterpillar has going through itself. When it goes into the chrysalis, the stemiobella egg will hatch out of the gut system and feed through the tissues of the caterpillar in order to escape, which ultimately kills the host as it comes out. Do we have any data actually showing a decline? We do if we look at Sophia Grippenberg's data, which should be up right now. This is transit data from the UK butterfly monitor treatment scheme used to make these graphs. On the left we have the small tortoiseshell butterfly and on the right we have the peacock as a control. The peacock butterfly is usually used as a control in all these methods. The peacock, although a small decline after 1999, they are stable uh, as statistically shown. Uh, the small tortoiseshell does boom and then drastically decrease. Maybe this is due to parasitism and weather combined as 2008 was a particularly bad time for all butterflies across the UK. However, statistically, this does show some sort of decline happening. So we're going to have a little explore at that. Uh, you also notice that we only have 15 years of data to actually work with. So this is a very, this is quite new. Taking a look at Nash's paper, we can also see distribution data and population increase of Stemiobello across the UK. In 2005, there were only a small amount of sightings, as you can see around mainly the south of the UK. And then over a six year period, Grippenberg in 2011 re-evaluated this and the Stemiobello population has increased four times, which shows there's very high dispersion and distribution between six years, it's multiplied four times as much. Does Demiobella have an effect on butterflies despite this data? Well, here we have from Grippenberg 2011's data, the same paper as we just looked at, a box plot of control a glaze in 2008 and 2009, and also a, a glaze urtisae in 2008 and 2009. The box plot shows that in 2008 for the peacock butterfly there is a high mortality, but in 2005 there is a negative mortality. Maybe this is due to evasion strategies that the peacock butterfly is able to make. However, in a glaze urtisee, 2008 and 2009, there were high mortalities, so 2008 is bad for both. This could be due to bad weather again, and, and like I said, we don't have much data to work with. So why is the small tortoise shell butterfly affected most out of all the other butterflies? There are two studies we're going to be looking at, Griffenberg and a really good book, which if you're into butterflies, I definitely recommend you should read. There are two possible causes. It could be butterfly breeding strategies when we compare breeding data between the small tortoise shell and peacocks, small tortoise shell on the left, peacock on the right. 